Welcome to episode 23 of the podcast for the recently deceased. I'm Nate Roberts. I am Rodney Godek. How you doing, brother? Whoa, hey, am I a different tone? I think I'm a different tone. Yeah, I think it, uh, I think it coloration. Got, a, got a little cooler. I cleaned myself up. I wonder if it was just that little bit of red I had my shirt. The did color right. balancing did is a right. thing. I'm doing okay. All right. Episode hey, welcome tw- back. Welcome back. To, uh, episode 23, we are here to discuss The Leech, written and directed by Eric Panikoff, and starring... Our main man, Jeremy Gardner, who doesn't know who we are, but that's okay. Uh, it also stars Graham Skipper and Taylor Zoutke. Zoutke? Um, yeah, that that's sounds close, close enough. Sounds good. Um, TZ. Yeah. That's, that's very All right. A, de- a devout priest welcomes a struggling couple into his house at Christmas time. What begins as a simple act of kindness quickly becomes the ultimate test of faith once the sanctity of his home is jeopardized. Uh, I actually really like that description of the movie. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's what happens. That's yeah. uh, that's that's definitely what happens. They're not telling any tales out of school. That's right. Um, so, if you're new to the podcast, what we do is we do short little reviews that are spoiler free, and then we segue into longer conversational type, full of spoiler uh, talky talk <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> laden laden spoiler laden spoiler laden get your ladles uh, as right. we segue to the uh to our third so i'm gonna start this one off my friend that's right um, you are so el Liche, to me is um i was super stoked it's a holiday movie it is the festive times if you are a uh, devout catholic as i am uh you know jesus is the reason for this season and the leech has all the feels of a good wholesome holiday classic uh it's cold it is comforting uh and it's just an interesting story and then there's some banana bananas type stuff that happens uh a la jeremy gardner and it, you know it, it sometimes it's really great and sometimes it's like whatever but it's still always engaging and fun to see what's happening and to see what is going to push this guy to the edge and how insane could it get. It's kind of build, 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 uh, slowly but surely. Um, And for the end, it just didn't culminate in as exciting or thrilling as of a way as I had hoped that it was going to. I feel like it held back a little bit more. However, I will say it is a highlight and a showcase of what uh, an indie film crew can do. This movie was made with for, with about, I want, I want to say it was eight people, four of which were actors. The other four are cast and crew, or sorry, cast is the actors, you dumb shit, uh, the crew. So, uh, and also I'm pretty sure Jeremy Gardner's wife is the uh, the other chick that's in the film, like his, his, his actor girlfriend. Um, okay. So... I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure I remember seeing that on his Twitter feed. So um, I ended up leaving The Leech with a 5 out of 10. I'm not in crazy about it, but I didn't hate it. It was it was fine. Uh, if you're in the mood for this kind of a film, a holiday film, it's, it kind of stretches what horror could be. There's plenty of elements there, and, and it definitely is in the lane of horror, but it just doesn't hit the marks that I wanted. And that could just be my own baggage that I brought and expectations that I had. And, and so that's fine. Uh, so where are you at with it, Nate? So I like this movie a little bit more than you. I, I feel like we're about to do an inverse of, of what we just did with Wounded Fawn here. Um, as horror, definitely. <laughs> like how, I, you, oh, here's the thing. You know definitely if we're doing an inverse to the other one, if you, cause Cause you I know, mine's a five. Cause I know. So if, stories, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I go on. I'm sorry. Go on. I think we're going to do this. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to sandbag this. Let, uh, really. let, let me, let me banter. Come on. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Um, there's a lot. It's a. It's definitely just a dark comedy. Like throw horror out the window. Um, you, you know, you get a little bit of shock and some gore at the end, and and you know some some weirdness when something else happens, which we'll get to later. But for the most part, this is a dark comedy set in Christmas time. 
uh, you know, a priest opens his heart in his home and, um, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. That's the movie. Uh, I love the relationship between um, the priest and the, the, the last guy he brought in, which is probably why he thought... What's the harm? The last guy I took in, he's he's like my my go to guy. He's my number two. Um, yeah, Rigo. Rigo, yeah. Um, so I could do the same thing with this guy. Uh, I loved the um, Jeremy Gardner and his wife. Those two characters, um, they were fantastic. Uh, what's his name? Skipper Graham. Uh, pretty sure you said them as the other backwards, but Graham Skipper. Yeah, well, whatever his name is, uh, Skip, Skipper, comma Graham. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> he he was excellent. He was excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, we we were gonna we're gonna make a joke about that later, but he did a great job uh, doing you know what he was supposed to do uh, as this as this priest character who kind of devolves uh, over time. Uh, yeah. I gave the leech a six out of ten. Weird. It's almost like an <laughs> inverse from that one we just did. It's almost like oh shit. The opposite. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get into the spoiler uh, conversation now. Spoilers. Um. All right. Yeah. I thought. Okay. So, Graham Skipper, Skipper Graham, whatever the hell his name is. Uh. He... <laughs> It's so condescending. Like this fucking guy could be watching, and he's like, "Hey, dickhead." Uh, well, I don't have the IMDb in front of me. I I, I just I told you, Graham Skipper. Whose fucking first name is Skipper? He's not on the goddamn island. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he goes by his nickname. Hey, These Skip. Actors and their stage names. We'll call him Zach for all. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's doing his best Zach Galifianakis impression. Uh, right, we we say this with love. We okay. do say this I mean, in love. It, it's 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 and it could just be the poor fucking bastard looks a lot like Zach Galifianakis. So jovial, round, rotund, thirty-something uh, guy kind of reads as Zach Galifianakis. Um, it's just it kind of it blurs a little bit heavy into it because some of his delivery of the dry yeah, comedy yeah, yeah. or like the this the sweet boy, uh, the the straight man. Yeah. Does read like him, uh, you know, from Hangover or, yeah. you know, he between two yeah. poinsettias. You know, yeah, it's like, come on. <laughs> he, de he definitely kind of sounds like it. Um, sounds like him as well as um, as well as looks like him. I, I hope that he's not offended that I said rotund. I, I mean I, it in a in a a warm spirited way. Either way, he did an amazing job, um, as did. Um, Jeremy Gardner, uh, again, yeah, who 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 has like knocked everything I've seen him in out of the park. Um, you know whether this movie was you know better or worse than his other films, he was worse. still he was still obviously worse. But I'm just saying, I'm saying, trying to stay neutral here. He was excellent in the movie, right? Okay, Switzerland. <laughs> the, yes, yes, we can still identify if we're look. It's still worlds beyond some of the fucking shit that we've seen this year. Oh, so yeah. yes, it's worse within his filmography, but his filmography is filled with goddamn home runs. With good, the with dude movies, is, yeah. is, is he, you know, he's an Aaron judge fucking indie filmer. So, uh, that's a New York r r baseball reference that he'll get, uh, at any rate, uh, <laughs> They are excellent. You're right. They yeah. play the roles perfectly, and the way that they have to do them and the characters they yeah. have to play, it is spot on what you would expect and what yeah. reads and, and, and comes across as genuine. They're right. not off. It's just the story is a little bit lacking. Right. It's so, not as interesting or engaging. Well, right. So so what, what can you highlight from this movie? And in my opinion, it, it's the dialogue and... Um, some of the some of the plot choices where yeah. uh, okay so we have like this character Jeremy Gardner who who is, ho is presumably just become homeless and he tries to get a ride to where he was staying with uh, the priest character um, when he gets there his stuff's on the lawn he asks if he can stay with the priest the priest is like sure they drive back to the priest's house okay so you know here's the setup uh you know, days later, or 
unknown time later, we have this this woman in a confessional. So we don't see her, but we hear her talk about how she's pregnant and the deadbeat doesn't have a job, doesn't have a place to stay, doesn't have a car, etc. And then, lo and behold, uh, Jeremy Gardner's character has now invited the the ex that just kicked him out to stay with the priest as well. And and he's, you know, he's not cool with it at first, but he becomes cool with it pretty quickly. Um, yeah. But but you as the viewer. I mean, it's the same voice. I'm sure they used the same. I'm sure they used the same actress. I'm sure it was intended to be a kind of a setup, like like it's a con, right? Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know if they read it as a, as a con so much as like they're just scummy people that will lie to benefit themselves because it's like, oh, it's a white lie. It's harmless. I can't do whatever, whatever, and you know, it's. I don't think it's like completely nefarious. Uh, is it? I don't think so. I, I, I think that was a setup. I think she she's she took, went there to say that to make to him feel guilty as a as a precursor to the introduction. <clears throat> like I, I definitely think that was intentional. That's fair because I guess that's fair. I didn't bother to think about it. This movie is not something where it's like let me let me let me sit and <laughs> contemplate the the machinations of the character's motives and well the the, uh, the horror wasn't <laughs> uh, relevant right away, so I was trying to decipher it, as I do, the whole time. Oh, I'm not faulting that. Yeah. I'm just saying <laughs> I didn't bother putting that together because I was like, yeah, okay. Well, I was trying to think about, like, okay, so what is it? Is he going to – are they going to hold him hostage and, you know, try, you're try all, to you're, – You have this knack for, like – you you're you're uh you're shut the fucking notifications i'll tell you that right now yeah uh, you're always you're Taking always in the off. movie <laughs> you're always in the movie but you kind of have this ability to kind of be immersed in a movie but then also still have the fucking gears turning where you want to like kind of like and i'm not saying it's a fault but you do have this this knack for um figuring things out or or, or solving or deciphering as you go uh, and it's interesting because uh, I like I didn't even kind of like think of it as like oh they're conning them to do this. I was just like okay yeah she was there and now she's here, um, and uh, you know it's a fair point. Um, yeah. Well I'm you know especially since because they didn't give us the horror right away the way Wounded Fawn did right we know he's a serial right. killer he kills the woman in the first five minutes. All right so where's the horror coming from? Right. What, it be, is it going to be from the priest or is it going to be from this couple? Uh, you know I'm trying to anticipate what happens next and and it was hard it was hard to guess until uh, until like the they started drinking and partying i was like uh, that's when yeah. i was like i was like oh okay so this is like just a moral uh plummet of, of yeah. the, for the priest is gonna all of his morals ethics uh promises to god are gonna go right out the window it's gonna unravel him so you know it's I was trying to guess until I got to that point. Then I was like, okay, I got it now. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, in it, in the thing about it is it, it is very much a comedy uh, first and, and horror second, you know, it's really the last, like what, like five, maybe 10 minutes where it yeah. has more horror, horrific elements. Uh, that's fine. Um, we've watched plenty of movies that barely touch horror that we enjoyed and didn't enjoy, which sidebar, uh, at some point this evening, while we're recording some episodes here, we do need to discuss uh, Tilda Swinton and uh, that disaster. Um, the however, eternal daughter. Oh, let me. I, I shouldn't say disaster. Uh, <laughs> it was a uh, something we'll talk about later. Um, but <laughs> shit, what the where, where was I going with that, brother? Uh, it was. Oh, so the horrific elements. Um, it really was the the comedic part him his descent and the debauchery that would occur his unraveling was really kind of like the main part and yeah. jeremy gardner being the the push that gets that ball rolling yeah and 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 how depraved of an individual he was it was entertaining to see that and it was uh, engaging you know i kept my interest the whole time but it could have been pushed more so, some of the great comedy for in this movie came from that too and what i loved about it was how they sandbagged it so there's that one mm -hmm. night of depravity with the there's coke and booze and never have i ever yeah never have i ever and then he goes to bed but then 
Nate, Nate explain Nate. Never Have I Ever for anyone that might not be aware. Oh, no one, no one, people haven't played that game? So in that game, it's a drinking well, game. Well, we don't know who's watching, so the, the viewers at home, yeah. Right. Uh, well, I'll say that I have never uh, kissed a man. And then everyone at the party who has kissed a man has to take a drink. So then you, um, so when they, they start, they start saying things that they know the other people have done just to make them drink. So that's how they kicked off their game in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so he gets loaded up. The priest gets loaded up. He goes to bed. Minutes later, suppose sometime later, he comes back to their bedroom and then just walks in. And then you have this nightmarish flash of, of cut scenes, and he wakes up from this nightmare, and he's like, oh, thank God, you know, something, something like that. Um, but it's like... Way later in the movie, not, you know, maybe not that much time in in their timeline has passed, but ten minutes at least before Jeremy Gardner makes a comment about something he couldn't know about the priest, and the priest is like, "How'd you how'd you know that?" And he's like, "He's like, oh, from last night when we fucked." <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it, it's, it's so casual coming from uh Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, 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 like... <laughs> it's great. Uh, sidebar, it's it's it is hilarious to, for you to say way later in the movie and then also say, you know, like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, well that's I think I, that's it's a, funny. That's a lot uh, of time but yes, to sit I, on a I, joke. I'm just <laughs> Uh that that is I will have you know that is a a a Rebecca Hall monologue that is a Mia Goth monologue <laughs> amount of amount of time, uh, sure. brother. Uh, we're we're but talking about an eighty. Jeremy minute. Gardner. <laughs> we're talking about an eighty minute Jeremy Gardner. <laughs> you movie. talking about <laughs> talking about pr practice? Um, Jeremy Gardner's delivery and his character it feels very natural. Like oh, yeah. he could easily be this scumbag type dude that's sort of uh, off the cuff, just uh, unapologetically. Uh, a mess and uh he's fucking he's playing his heavy metal uh at night oh, yeah. uh late <laughs> like after he invites him in he's like those are my fucking tunes and he's like and then he's like no metal music you know uh and it just progresses from there and they, you know they drink and then he's like no booze and all right so from that line yeah, i mean <laughs> from, from that from that line so that that line changes the movie from that line um, he is so disgusted with himself, with the actions that he took, that he collects all the metal tapes, and he and he collects all their booze and all their coke, and he flushes it, and he burns the tapes. And Jeremy Gardner's character, whether he's playing along because this is his, this is his meal ticket, or if mm -hmm. he's actually trying to be a good person he's actually he his character is claiming uh to be on the side of this priest and to be totally into the things that this priest is forcing him to do and the the girlfriend is not the girlfriend is like that's our those are our drugs what, what are you letting him do that for <laughs> um <laughs> and 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 she's like that's a good that's a good impression folks hey, yeah, for, for the record that <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so so like so now so now the movie it feels a little different and and he he's he's taken the role he used to be uh like walked all over by these two these two would just do whatever they wanted in his house um you know they and they they broke the urn that um his mother was in right mm -hmm. um and now he's taken on this very dominant role of of like I'm I'm the warden and this is my jail now, um, you know bedtime lights out at this. Um, there's right. you know no more this type of clothes. Like I think he even like gives um, the girlfriend like a this crazy like pilgrim, yeah one of his mother's ass, dresses. Yeah, dresses like yeah. full yeah, um, and he and he's this is where he's a little unhinged and he's starting to lose it because he can't believe. Um, what he's done. Yeah, and I mean, the whole impetus, well, one of the contributing factors to his descent is his inability to reach the masses. You know, right. he, uh, <laughs> he's engaging with social media uh, with Rigo to 
bring people into the fold to increase his flock to shepherd more and no one gives a fuck uh at the beginning of the movie it opens just like uh like boondock saints you know this gripping uh uh sermon of all these good things that could be and and the in the 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 humanity in all of us and the need for religion. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, and you go to the pans of the church. Oh yeah. And there's six and no one's there. there. There's, and, and then he's always on you know, social media. No one's following. No one's liking. It's just Rigo. There's he's one like, and to, it's always Rigo. <laughs> he's talking, he's talking to the wall and it's, it's very relatable, obviously yeah. from our standpoint in a lot of ways. Uh, and so you can feel the isolation like you can feel him questioning his calling, uh, that he has, he's not been able to correct these people. His faith in in what he's doing and in God is is brought into question. Um, and so it 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 all works. It all it all jives. Uh, so yeah. you know I can't I I it is not a that's not a fault to the movie. Um, so. So there's a point um, as we as we reach the climax where um, the priest, I keep saying the priest, he's got a name, right? Can we can we? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's probably like <laughs> Father Fuckface, uh, fa- Father David. David. So David. Sorry, Graham. Sorry, so, Eric Pennycroft. So David, uh, finally, or not finally, but he he has probably put two and two together that the woman uh, in the confession booth is the girlfriend, and he tells. Um, Jeremy's gardener to, to just or no, he tells her to just stop keeping the secret. Tell him, tell him that you're pregnant, and she, and that's when. So that's another reason Jeremy's trying to be, um, to be a good person all of a sudden and kind of siding with David, um, as all this other stuff is is coming. But David is unraveling more and more, and um, they're supposed to work on Rigo and David are supposed to work on this like rap song. This like hip hop, uh, <laughs> right. hip hop for Jesus kind of thing, and um, he hallucinates that that Rigo is is Jeremy and like like just beats him to, de- to death, and yeah. and then when he comes to and he realizes it's Rigo, this is this is another great uh, comedic piece from Jeremy where he's like, oh yeah, he's dead. We're gonna have to hide that body. <laughs> yeah like but but my favorite part of that sequence is that jeremy is totally down with hiding this body like mm-hmm. like he, he's he's david's friend like david might not think that but in his mind he likes david like there he does he does seem to be genuine in those feelings yeah yeah like this is this is just his life now and he's got to protect his his heard yeah uh, and take care of his guy and this is his guy now and so yeah, yeah he'll do whatever he'll ride or die type uh right. attitude because right. well, what else does he fucking have and so this um, this is the sidebar the 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 rap song is fucking you know him doing lyrics and then uh father david trying to explain what it's like and then <laughs> it not being sure uh but also the uh the heavy metal uh shit that came out this year dubbed over the the one fucking crazy evangelical dude which i'm sure you've seen the clip of oh yeah 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 those are great he's like praying praying to get rid of covid and they've got the heavy metal music and it's like ah covid be gone and it's like yeah fantastic haven't seen it go watch it i'm sure everyone that's listening has because it's awesome yeah it was great (laughs) um so so this is the event that pushes david over the edge he he loads up his shotgun. He comes back. He, he's he got Jeremy. He's got the girlfriend. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. The camera pans out. Um, he's saying a bunch of stuff about um, about doing the right thing and about fixing his mistakes and making up for, for what he's done, for his wrongdoing, stuff like that. Now, real quick, sidebar. Uh, both of his sermons, we need a sidebar counter. Yeah, so both of his sermons in this movie were excellent. Like we talk about monologues, they weren't that long, but they were excellently written. Um, yeah, especially the the unhinged one at the end, the, like the the last um, sermon he has. Because Rigo's starting to get like, "Are you okay, man? Like you're you're starting to talk crazy up there." Yeah, um, it rivaled uh, Father Pruitt from. Midnight Mass. For Midnight Mass, sure, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, start, you appreciate that reference. You don't like my Boondock Saints reference, but you're okay with the Midnight Mass. I like reference. the Midnight Mass reference. I actually, I, I recently watched Midnight Mass. Finally, very late to that party. Okay, so, so the camera pans out from the house, and you hear two gunshots, and you know your first assumption is he killed them both, um, but then a, a, the girlfriend who's holding her stomach because she's got a little bump now, um, covered in blood, uh, kind of waddles out of the house. As it as it fades to uh, what she she waddled. It's just, it's like, I don't she's, know. I do, she, I do not think that she was waddling. I very, think I think that you're either steps. you're either you're either fat shaming or you're no, pregnant shaming. No, no, she was. She taking, didn't waddle. She I'm gonna rewatch very, the fucking clip. Go watch it. <laughs> I'm gonna rewatch Wait, it. She, she measure. How I don't. Short you don't say waddle. You don't those, say waddle you unless you're talking waddle. about being too fat nah. or being too pregnant. She, you, you like she, she you say she shambled. How about she, we admit them that one? She, she shambles. She, she shuffled. There you she go. Shuffled. See, out of the then house. I'm not. It could have been for she could <laughs> shuffle for any number okay. of reasons, not just how fat you are. She wasn't fat or too pregnant. She Fucking was just body modeling. shaming. Anyway, the goddamn mattress. Uh, it's fucked up. So, so he killed Jeremy uh, and he killed himself. Obviously, all that stuff he was talking about fixing his mistakes was that this child would grow up without. This piece of shit, Jeremy, as its father. Uh, good job, good climax. Um, you know, it's a dark comedy. It's not a horror movie. Uh, don't expect it. Uh, but it kind of felt like it was referencing Dark Man with his bandages too. You know, with uh, uh, <laughs> with Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think a little bit? Like it looked like it a lot. I love. I feel Dark like they're having fun. I love Dark Man, and that is two episodes in a row with Sam Raimi references. Sam Raimi. All right. Okay. Episode twenty three, The Leech. I gave it a six. This guy gave it a five. Uh, uh, okay, I, I must be on that side. So cool. Yeah. There you go. Um, for episode 23 of the podcast I recently deceased, I'm Nate Roberts. I'm Rodney Godek. Take care. <laughs>